Okay, so the question today, can we use a visualization that has been generated by R and bring it within SpotFire? The answer is yes, and uh, we're going to use this DXP that has already embedded a data function. So if you go to Edit Data Function Properties, you can see that this embedded data function is there. And if you click on edit script, you can see the actual script that is behind the scenes of this DXP. So what's going on here? To start with, I strongly recommend you to read this article. It's a very good article that is published on the TIPCO blog Tips and Tricks. It's called Adding R Graphics to a Spotfire. And in this specific case, we are focusing on a classification tree modeling example using the Spotfire out of the box classification tree tool. So the classification tree tool is going to generate the actual model for you. It's going to provide all these outputs automatically for you. Everything is going to happen automatically in Spotfire. But it's going to miss this random classification tree. And sometimes with this uh, type of uh, classification models, you, it's important to have this visualization on it, depending on the case. But it provides value added when you can see it in this way rather than this way. So to do so, all the behind the scenes are described on this article, all the specific technical details are going to be here, so I'm not going to cover that in this video. This is not the goal of this video. The goal of this video is to show you how to use it when you already have the function embedded into Spotfire. So for this specific case, the data looks like this. It's a typical example of a classification tree. When you have a variable that can be a yes or no, one, zero, present versus absent, or everything that you want to, to use on the classification model. And then you have many other variables that you want to include on that model. In this specific case, you have age, number, and start. Once again, for details regarding what this data is and what the model is trying to do, go back to the article that has more descriptions and goes deeper into these kind of details. Let's focus on how we're going to use the data function on this file. If you go to Tools, Classification Modeling, Classification 3, you will have everything you need to create a model. In this case, we can create a model for this specific variable. So we're, going, we're trying to predict if it is present versus absent using the other variables that we have loaded in this table. So if I select all the other variables that we have loaded on the table and click Add, we have what we need to create the model. So when clicking OK, Spotfire automatically is, is going to generate all of these tabs for you. It's going to give you the model summary with all the statistical details you need to know regarding each of these nodes. It's going to give you the variable importance uh, bar chart that is going to provide extra details on your model. And it's going to give you some links to extra visualizations in case you want to go deeper into this analysis. However, this visualization that I have on the top right is not included on the default out of the box output that Spotfire generates every time that you use this classification modeling tool. So what we are doing for this specific example is using R to generate the tree and then bringing back that tree as an object that we are calling on a text area. But all of this is happening for you already on this DXP because this DXP has the data function already embedded here and all of that is already happening here for you. So Remember, all the technical details are part of the article. Right here, we're going to focus on how can you reuse this data function to edit what is behind the scenes and visualize your own set of data into this tree. Okay? So for that, 
we can just simply go to a new set of data. In this case, I have a completely different set of data, as you can see. I have a lot of ones and zeros that can be represented as yes or no. And what I want to do is to use all of this data into my file where I do have embedded the data function. So let's copy this data. I'm just going to do a copy and then I'm going to go to my file and I'm going to file after a table. In this case, it's coming from the clipboard. And I'm going to call this new set of data. OK, so when I click OK, Spotfire automatically is going to generate a new page for me where we can actually see the new set of data table. So here we have a completely different set of data and we're asking completely different questions. But this data is still valuable when we're doing a classification tree. So classification tree. We have a variable that can be a yes or no, are positive or negative, or any other questions that you want to do as a binary answer. So in this specific case, what I want to do is to use this data into the model. So I'm just going to go to my model that's already generated in the DXP that has the data function already embedded. And what I want to do is just edit this model so instead of calling this data table, I'm going to call my new set of data. And I'm going to clean this model. And I'm going to ask a different question. So in this case, I'm not going to focus too deeply into what I'm asking here. I'm just asking a different question. And I'm using different variables that are coming from my new set of data. In this specific case, I'm going to add all these variables into my tree, into my classification tree and see if any of these is actually important or my yes or no decision or question that I'm asking at the beginning. So when I click OK, we can see that Spotfire is going to generate a completely different uh, model and it's going to generate a completely different set of uh, variables and outputs and so on. So I'm just going to reorganize things around. To the top left, we have the actual model and we have the actual output of the model. We have the question that we were asking and we have all the variables that we involved on that question. Then we have the tree that is being represented here. And the tree is being represented by an object that was generated on R and we are bringing that as part of our text area in Spotify. So we don't need the original data table anymore. We can just delete that. And now everything I have in my Spotfire file is my own data, my own model. And in that model, I have my own tree that is being generated by R. So if I want to do any modification on this model, just go ahead and click the Edit button again, clean it and ask a different question if you have the data for it. And then just uh, select whatever you need to select and ask the questions again. Click OK again and you see how that uh, and just rearrange things so you can actually see the tree and uh, the variables that you want to focus on. So in this case, I want to see the tree and I want to see my important variables and so on. Um, it's important to highlight the fact that, as described on the article, we are actually using R to generate that visualization. And it's important to specify the path for where R is installed in your own computer. So if you check the edit document properties, properties, just be sure that this path it's matching where you do have R installed for this to work properly. That's kind of uh, one of the key points here. But if this is OK, and if you do have the packages that you need installed, everything should work fine. For the description of those packages, just take a look at the introduction so you can see more detail about it. And once again, the article is very good with all the behind the scenes on how this is working. OK, so I hope this was useful. Now you know how to reuse an embedded data function with your own data in Spotify.